Hi, I'm Melanie, uh, Director of Reclaim Frame. Everyone, thank you for joining us. And Mariam Tuzani, Director of The Blue Kaftan. Thank you so much for sharing this beautiful film with us. Hello, thank you for having me. So, Mariam, I want to ask first, um, I know uh, that there is a real blue kaftan uh, and I, I understand that this kind of somewhat provided a starting point for the film and a very personal one. And I wonder if you could tell us about how the story unfolded from there. Well, the, the actual uh, kaftan is black. Um, I grew up seeing my mother wear this beautiful black kaftan every once in a while on all the big occasions. She had other kaftans, but this one was particularly beautiful. It was just like the one in the film. Very, um, very intricate, had this um, beautiful, beautiful uh, handwork to it. And every time she wore it as, as a little child, then later as an adolescent, I always dreamt of the day I would be able to wear this, this beautiful kaftan. And I always imagined myself the day I would become a woman and I would be able to wear it. Uh, I just see her going out in this, in this, you know, in this garment. And she had always explained to me how it had been made the hours that it took to fix it. Uh, all the investment uh, that the artisan had put in it, all the hours spent, spent, making it all the love as well that 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 it takes to make such a garment and and this personal link that that is created between the craftsman and the item he is making and she always explained to me how this kaftan was made and I was very very touched by this and um so I grew up really with the image of her uh wearing this this beautiful garment and I tried it on so many times in my life and it was always too big until the day it was not too big and then she gave it to me and for me it was the most beautiful of gifts because I really had the feeling that I was wearing a part of her souvenirs, a part of her life, uh, things that I had seen from the outside. It's like if I was wearing them on my own skin. It's like if I was wearing a part of her. Uh, and that felt very beautiful for me. Uh, I also felt that there was this whole part of the 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 the, the part of the soul of the man that had made this 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 fa this beautiful kaftan basically that i was carrying along with me as well because it's true that it takes so much uh to make uh so there was something very charged emotionally in this garment uh something very beautiful like i was saying about the transmission that i felt so strongly and from my, my mother and the tradition from transmission from this craftsman and many years later, I actually found out that this was a dying craft, that uh, that men like Halim in the film, these kind of craftsmen were disappearing because the craft was dying, because we live in a world where things go too fast and we just want to consume and move on to what's next. So that's something that really touched me very much. And basically, this kaftan found its way into the story. Halim in the film became a craftsman, I think unconsciously, because of this particular uh, strong personal link that I had to the craft through my mother's kaftan. And there's something about the kaftan that kind of stands in as a as a symbol for love, and there's something there's so much about this film that feels really kind of expansive in terms of the different kinds of uh, the different ways in which people can express love um, and different kinds of love and love to mean loyalty and acceptance and no judgment and one of my favorite lines in the film uh is don't be afraid to love and i wonder if you could just unpick mm. that line for us or maybe tell us where that came from because that seems to me to reflect the film as a whole in so many ways yeah of course i mean that that is an essential line in the film because when mina says that to halim uh she wants the man that she loves to be happy she mm. wants him to be it to 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 have a chance at love, to have a chance at life. Uh, she knows that she's leaving, but she wants to leave behind her a man that loves himself, that loves himself, that accepts himself, and that is proud of who he is. 
And love shouldn't be something we should be afraid of. Uh, love is something beautiful. Love is the most beautiful of emotions. And it's also, I think, for me, one of the most complex emotions. That's what, why I also wanted to delve into the complexity of this emotion through these three characters. Uh, I believe that there is so many different ways of loving, that love can take so many forms, can have so many faces. And I think that we try too often to put to put our th this kind of emotion in a box uh, to draw clear lines uh, because it's maybe easier for us for whatever reasons. But I really believe that love is something that can be so much bigger, that is so much bigger, and that's really much more complex and that just cannot be broken down or simplified. So, yeah. And there's, I mean, there's something quite brave uh in the making of this film, I know that same-sex relationships are uh, illegal in Morocco. You can face imprisonment. Um, and I wonder if you could tell us a bit about how any kind of resistance that you came across in the making of this film or, or making a film like this in the context of uh, a country where same-sex relationships is illegal in terms of the production and also the kind of reception of it on release? Yeah, no, I believe that love uh, can only be free, to go back to what we were saying before. And this film is, for me, a film about, about the freedom to love, the freedom to love who you want to love, however you want to love them, regardless of where you live in the world. Uh, and yes, for that matter, it was very important for me to tell the story in my society, in my country. Uh, and it's true that same-sex uh, relationships are punished by the law. Uh, it's true that uh, more than the law, what can be inhibiting prohibiting is sometimes the mentalities uh, that will not accept uh, and that's why for me uh, it is essential to be able to to open a discussion to be able to open a dialogue to be able to participate in a debate uh, that, that 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 i think is absolutely necessary because i live in a society that's very complex where there are many different points of views some are very open very modern other ones are are more 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 close to certain things and I believe that it is essential to be able to, to experience and to live our lives the way we want to live them. For me, it's something absolutely necessary. And that is why I really wanted to talk about these characters, about characters like Halim and Yusuf that generally do not exist on the big screen, to tell these stories, because I believe that these are stories that need to be heard, that need to be that need to be existing openly uh, and that need to be that that can help in in contributing like i was saying to to a dialogue uh as i was writing the film what what motivated me was really this desire as well this desire to talk about love about the complexity of this love like i was saying because it's not only a film about sex same sex relationships it's a film about love period Whatever form it takes, be it between two people of the same sex or two people of different sexes, it does not matter. It's love and love is love. And that for me was something essential. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. And thank you so much for talking to us, uh, Marion. Congratulations uh, on yeah, a Reclaim the Frame. We're really proud to be supporting uh, the UK release uh, in partnership with New Wave. Uh, and yeah, as exactly as you say, I hope that this film opens up a conversation uh, about, uh, yeah, about different forms of love and about uh, the kind of complexity of love. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you.